Uh, in this tutorial, I will present a data logging system uh, created in LabVIEW and in SQL Server. The data logging ap application itself is created in LabVIEW. And I have designed some uh, a database structure um, and then implemented the database using SQL Server. So the data logging application in LabVIEW reads data from a sensor in this case just a temperature sensor and then it log or save the data to the sql server database so basically uh, the contents of this tutorial i will present a data logging application created in labview i will present a simple database design created with the irvin data modeler software and then uh, the database will be implemented in sql server and then uh, i will go through uh, the labview application and see how it works for logging data and storing data in uh, the SQL Server database. So here you see uh, the simple database uh, design created in the Irvin data modeler software. So here, uh, first we have this uh, sensor type table, its sensor type ID and a sensor type name. So here I typically store different types of sensors like PT100, uh, TC0, temp 36, uh, thermocouple, etc. So um, the types are stored in this table and the actual sensors that are used are stored in this table. Table. So we have sensor name and they are, you have the foreign key to this table here. So here, uh, the sensor name and the sensor type ID, which I get from this table and also have a location here. So he typically here you can specify where the sensor are at the moment. When you log data, it could be uh, in a specific town or in a specific building or in a specific room. Uh, I have chosen in this simple example to just put the location here in the sensor table. Of course, you could have a separate table for the location and then you can link in the location table here as a foreign key. But I've made it simple by just make it uh, for the reader to just enter, sorry, for the user to just enter the location here in this uh, sensor table directly. And then you have finally the measurement table. In this table, the actual measurement values are stored. So here you have a foreign key to what kind of sensor that are measured. And then you have the actual measurement value and the timestamp for that specific uh, measurement. So basically, and that's the um, database. Uh, in this case, I'm just using three uh, basic uh, database tables. Of course, you could easily extend this uh, database structure with more uh, tables. Uh, like mentioned, this location, you could have a table for building, rooms, uh, a table for vendors, uh, etc. But basically, this is enough for demonstrating this data logging application that has been created with uh, LabVIEW. So the next step now is to generate a database script. So here in Irvin you can choose between uh, logical model and physical model. So when you choose physical model you can go here under actions and, and schema and then uh, you can use go through this wizard in order to generate a database script that you can insert in your SQL Server database. So basically, just click next here, and then you go through all these settings. And when you are satisfied, you can click the preview and see if the database script is according to how you want to have it. And then you can just click on the save button here. But basically, here under security, you don't you deselect all uh, options. The same with the server, deselect all options. Database, you de deselect all options. In schema, you deselect all options. In the table, you select create and table. Uh, and then um, column. And typically you select physical order and default create. That's all. You, you remove all options here. So you deselect all. The same in the index, this one. Here you select primary key, create, foreign key, create, and unique, create, trigger, remove all 
checkboxes and the same for other options. And then you end up with a table script like this. And here are these three tables, create table sensor type, create table sensor and create table measurement. And then you have the different columns and what data type they have, if they are identity one one, null or not null. Uh, so here you specify that the sensor type ID is a primary key. And the same here in the sensor table. And you specify that the sensor name here should be unique. And that here you specify the foreign key, etc. So basically this is the script you need in order to insert these tables in SQL Server database. So then I just click on the, on the save button and save this as a script on my hard drive, typically table.sql or something, and then just save it in a proper uh, place in my hard drive. So now um, my uh, database tables has been saved in this file. I'll just call it measurement system tables. You can of course call it whatever you like. And then I just double click on it. And then this database script will be open in SQL Server uh, Management Studio. Um, I have already created a database. So you just go here after you have logged in to the uh, SQL Server, you go to databases, right click, create new database, and then you specify the name for your database. But I have already created the database, which I have called a measurement underscore system. And then in order to insert these tables into the database, I just click on the execute button and these tables will be created inside the database. I have already created them. So then you will see that they appear here under tables. So here I have sensor type, sensor and measurement, my three tables. So the data inside the sensor table and the measurement table are created from the data logging application created in LabVIEW, but the sensor type, I just hard call them here inside the database. So basically you can just right click here and edit top 200 rows. And then you can insert the necessary sensor type and name. I have specified PT100, thermocouple, temp36 and TC01. So you can just enter this data here, or as I have done, I have created a script. So I created a, a script called insert sensor types. I just double click on it. And then by running this script, I will uh, create these four sensor types uh, directly inside my database. So then I can use this script um, to create uh, automatically these four uh, sensor types. So I just and I created the script, I can just open it and click in execute in order to insert the data in this sensor type table. So that's the sensor type data. Next, I also need to create a store procedure and a view, which I have already created. So let's start with the view. I'm using this view in order to store data into the database from the lab application. Typically you don't need to create and use a stored procedure but the good thing uh, by using a stored procedure you can uh, create a more advanced logic and you can also insert data into multiple data etc so typically these are these stored procedures stored procedure are used to save the measurement data inside uh, the measurement table and the input to the stored procedure is the sensor name and the actual value and then I just check if the sensor already exists. If not, I create it. And then finally, I just insert uh, the measurement into the measurement table like this. So that's the stored procedure. And then I also use a uh, database view. Uh, typically, you need to create a database view when you are going to um, retrieve data from two or more tables. So typically here in the database, I have in the sensor type, I have the sensor type ID and the sensor type name, but in the sensor table, I have the sensor type ID, but in order to find the sensor type name, I have to look up into the sensor type uh, table.
table. So that, then by creating and using a view, I can um, get information from multiple uh, tables in one. So then I, since I have created a view called sensor information, I can just um, create a new query. So then I can just type select all from on the name of the view and click execute. And then you see I will retrieve information that are stored in multiple uh, tables. So you just, uh, so basically a view is a virtual table that contains information from multiple tables. So then you see here by select all from sensor information, I'm retrieving uh, the sensor type name and the sensor name and this, these are information that are stored in, in different tables. And next I will go through the uh, data logging application created in LabVIEW. But first I will just select all from measurement. And then you see the data inside that table now is empty. So there are so far uh, no data are stored in the measurement table. And that is the job for the data logging application created in LabVIEW in order to, to, to read data from a sensor and then insert the data inside this uh, table. So then I have the database uh, or the data logging application created in LabVIEW here. So here you see the application on the hard drive. So basically I just click on data logging system on the LabVIEW project file. And then the LabVIEW project will be open like this. And then I have created a structure. So the main application is in a main folder, which you also find here on the hard drive. I have created a resource fo folder with some icons and a menu, and I have also some sub BIs. But let's open the main application. So here you see the main uh, data logging application. So let's just uh, run the application. And here I can select uh, the sensors that are stored in the system. So these values are stored inside the database in the sensor table. I just right click, select top two. On, uh, and here um, you see that the sensors that are stored in the database are stored four different sensors, sensor one, two, three, and four. And they also have different types of uh, sensor type IDs, which are stored in the sensor type uh, table, as mentioned earlier. Here, these four sensor types, they have sensor type ID 1, 2, 3, 4. And then you see I have the pri uh, four keys to this table here. And also have different location, Porsgrunn, Schien, Bergen and Bamble. Of course, here you can add more sensors, but I can also do it from the LabVIEW application. So I just click here on this uh, button and then you see I get the four sensors that are, that are stored in the database. I can add new sensors. So I can add a sensor number five. Five, I select the sensor type. This should be a PT100 and uh, location should be at uh, USN campus screen or something click OK and then you see this sensor number five has been stored here and in the database I can also click update in order to update the name or change the sensor type or the location or I can also delete them so basically this is um, where you can uh, set up the sensor configuration in this uh, data logging application and then when you are going to start the logging, you just uh, select the proper sensor here. Let's say I select sensor number one and then click on the start button. And then the data will be retrieved from the sensor and stored in the database. And also the first typical thing you need to do is to go here on the tools and select database settings. And then you need to specify uh, your data source, your database name and the username and the password. And this information, you can specify it here in the application, but this information is stored in a settings file on your hard drive. 
So here you see the information inside this settings.ini file. So here in the database section, information that you specified here under tools and database settings was stored inside this uh, settings.ini file on your hard drive. So then next, just uh, let's just start the data logging. You can also specify the logging interval. So here you can specify the logging interval in seconds. Default it's 10 seconds. I specify the sensor and just click the start button. And then I need to wait uh, about 10 seconds. And then you see the first value has been plotted here. And then you see the current value, 24.6 degrees Celsius. And hopefully after 10 new seconds, as you see here, a new value be, has been retrieved from the sensor, plotted, and also stored in the database. And you see the current value here, and now a third value has been stored after 20 seconds, which has the value 27 degrees Celsius. And then I can go to the database. I can click uh, right there, select all from measurement, click execute. And then you see the data has been stored here in the measurement table. So here is the, um, the measurement ID is just a running number. Here you see which sensor the data are stored in and the actual measurement value and the date, style, date time. So now you see the sensor ID is one. And if you go to the sensor table, you see that this sensor number one is sensor number one. I can specify another sensor, I select sensor number two, then go back to the database and then you see the data are read and plotted here and also stored in the database. So now you see, uh, not this table, but this one, select all from measurement, then you see the data now are logging from sensor number two. And choose another sensor, four, and wait for a new data to be stored in the database, and then just execute, and then you see now oh, I have storing values from sensor number five, like this. And also, if you need to know more about information about the different sensor, let's say I'm now logging from sensor number five, I just click on this icon, and then I see what kind of sensor type, uh, sorry, uh, what kind of, yeah, uh, sensor type uh, it, uh, the sensor of number five is, it's a thermocouple and the location, etc. for the different sensors. So basically this is the data logging application created in LabVIEW. It retrieves data uh, from a temperature sensor and then store the values inside an SQL server according to, to the logging interval you specify here and the information is stored in the database you specify here. Let's just dig into the code as well before we are finished with the tutorial. So I just go to Windows and show block diagram in order to see the code for this application. So the code is implemented as a so-called state machine consisting of a while loop and inside the while loop there's a case structure with different cases and also here in the wait loop I'm waiting for for the user to click on the different buttons on the screen and then based on what the user clicks on let's say the user clicks on uh, this sensor configuration button which is this one then it specify here which case to go to. So then it goes to the case called sensor configuration, which you find here. But let's just go through the different cases. So when the program starts, it goes into the case called initialization. And inside here, I just clear the data inside the chart, which you find here. I also specify uh, default logging interval here, which is 10 but you can also change it later here. I just uh, disabled uh, and enable some buttons because when you start the program, this button should be enabled. And when you click on the start button, this button is dis uh, disabled and then you can stop the login. So 
based on what the user do, I enable and disable some buttons. And also when the logging starts, this one, this indicator turns green and when I stop it, then I shut off this indicator. So basically this is the initialization case. Then next, go to connect to the database. So basically, here I um, connect to the database. And also I'm using a SQL toolkit, which I have created and you can download from my web page. So um, this, when you install this toolkit, it will be available here in LabVIEW. And it consists of four uh, services, one for opening communication with the database, one for closing the connection to the database, and then this one for retrieving data from the database, and then you, you use this one in order to insert data, delete data or update data from the database. So basically I open the connection to the database. Next I retrieve sensors, so get sensors. Then I just fill in the sensors that you see here from the database. Then I just select sensor name, sensor ID from sensor or the by sensor name. And then I use this SQL select. And then I do need to do some uh, logic in LabVIEW and then the values and the strings are presented here in this dropdown menu. Next, I go to wait, which is the main case. And depending on what the user is doing, it goes to a specific uh, case. Either you click on this button, you click on this button, this button, etc. And typically, in order to start the logging, you need to click on this button. And then, typically, the user start um, go uh, when you click the start button, and the call go into this case. Uh, do uh, disable and enable some buttons and then just also turn on this to, to be true and it goes to the start the logging case which you find here uh, basically it doesn't do anything here and then it go back to wait and then if you click the stop button it goes into here if you click the exit button it goes into here and Go to the exit case, which you find here, and stop the program. And if you click on um, this button, the sensor configuration button, it goes to sensor configuration, which you find here, and then it opens this sub VI, and then you can add update or delete uh, uh, the sensor list. And also here, this in this survey, it's built on the same, in the same way, it's a state machine where you have a while loop case structure and a wait structure. And also uh, when you run it, you have get access to this toolbar or menu, menu where I can select the database uh, settings. So basically in order to create a menu in LabVIEW you just go to edit and select runtime menu and then you can specify the menu objects here. In this simple menu I have only one option and then that is the database settings. So when the user is clicking on the uh, on the menu, so when the user clicks on the database settings here, then this pops up. And in you see in the code, in the wait case, and here in the menu selection uh, event handler. Um, so when the user clicks on the menu, it goes into this event handler, and then you need to find which uh, menu he clicked on. And then I create a case structure here. And in this case, it selects the database settings menu. And then I go to database settings here, which is another case, which you find here. And then you can go in here and specify the name of your database, 
username, password, etc. But uh, basically, uh, when the user clicks the start logging button, um, which is here, then uh, this logging indicator is going to true. And basically, in the wait here, on timeout, here I'm checking if it has um, reached the logging interval. So every t 10 seconds, it goes into here. And if 10 seconds has happened since the last logging, this output here will be true. And if also this logging is true, then it goes to a case called sensor data. Then let's open the sensor get sensor data um, case. And basically, here I have created a sub VI where I the input is sensor name. And based on the sensor name, I retrieve the sensor type for that specific sensor. And based on the sensor type, I log eight. Uh, uh, either I select the P300 sensor and inside this survey it retrieves uh, data from the P300 sensor. If I select a sensor that is of type thermocouple, it starts to read data from uh, the thermocouple sensor. And if I choose a sensor which is of type temp36, it starts to read data from the temp36 sensor. And finally, if I choose a, a sensor that is of type TC01, which is a um, sensor from National Instruments, it starts to read data from that sensor, and then it updates the current value here, and it updates uh, the chart. And when it has read data from the sensor, it goes to the save sensor data, which is uh, this case and then here I am using this store procedure which I presented earlier this save measurement and input to that store procedure store procedure is the sensor I specify here either in this case sensor one two three four five or of course you can create a new one by clicking this button and it stores the actual value into the database and then finally, go back to wait. Wait for 10 new seconds, and then it goes back and read a new value from the temperature uh, sensor or what kind of sensor you have specified here. Then go to save data and store the new value to the database. So basically, that's the data logging application created with LabVIEW where the data are stored in an SQL Server database. And here you can specify different sensors you specify the database you're using you can start and stop logging you can specify the logging interval here 10 seconds one second 60 seconds etc and then you see the real-time data and then you see the historical data here in the in this uh, plot so, so that's all. So good luck creating your own uh, data logging system using LabVIEW and SQL Server. Thank you.